in this problem, I want you to understand there are actually a couple different ways of solving it. Um, but because the way that it's laid out in our particular system and more, they specifically want you to type in certain answers in a certain way. So it kind of makes us do the problem in this one particular method. So notice the we our goal is to minimize the, the ladder. We want to sh have the shortest ladder possible that would go over this fence. Now the trick to this is the the way that they're recommending it is to split the ladder into two parts. So what this means is think of it like this. Think of like maybe this is part A and this is part B. Okay. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to use capital letters just because my handwriting is bad. Okay, capital A and capital B. Now, what I want you to imagine is if we were to draw a line, I'm gonna draw it to the green line where that ladder is laying. There we go, horizontal line. Do you see we're getting two triangles where our angles on the interior would be the same? So therefore, whenever I reference theta in kind of like this, this triangle right here, I'm also having the same theta in the little triangle up there. So you can imagine we have a big triangle and a little triangle where the link, the part of the ladder from the yellow triangle is A, capital A, and the part of the triangle in the blue is B. Okay, so if I wanted the total length of the ladder, well, that would be A plus B, right? I take the yellow piece and the blue piece, add them together, giving me my total length. Now, the neat thing about this is we know the height of the yellow, the yellow part of the um, triangle is 10, 10 feet. But we don't know the height of the blue triangle. But the neat thing here is you see, we know that the bottom, well, since it's a horizontal line, the distance from the ladder to the building was two feet. So therefore, the bottom part of this triangle would again be two feet. So now, using trig, I can build one trig function uh, using my yellow ladder parts and another trig function using my blue ladder parts. And so we're going to, and then we'll solve for A and B. So this first part here we'll say is, okay, well, I want opposite and hypotenuse. So therefore, I'm going to use sine theta, which would be 10 over A. And I want to be able to put together my ladder, my parts of my ladder. So I'm going to solve for A. So I'm going to multiply both sides by A. Then I'm going to divide by sine, and we get that. And of course, we can think of 1 over sine. Well, that's cosecant, so we could rewrite this as 10 cosecant theta. Similar logic over here, but we don't have the opposite. We have the adjacent for the blue triangle, so we're going to go ahead and say, okay, that would be cosine. And so that would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and again, solving for b. That was supposed to be a b. There we go. To divide both sides by b now, so that gives me uh, try again. <laughs> We're going to decide both, <laughs> divide both sides by cosine. There we go. So that's going to give me two over cosine theta. And once again, rewriting that when we have one over cosine, that would be the same thing as secant theta. So the length of my ladder being a plus b, I could substitute that in to make it 10 cosecant theta plus 2 secant theta. Okay, fantastic. Now, the next part of the problem is asking us to find the derivative of this function. Well, this is just our standard derivative rules. So we're going to say the derivative of cosecant would be negative cosecant cotangent, but we maintain the argument. So it's going to be negative 10 cosecant theta cotangent theta, and then the derivative of secant would be secant theta tangent theta. Not too bad. Okay, now on to part C, to actually find the length of the ladder. All right, well, how do we find, how do we find optimization? We say, well, it's the thing I'm trying to min or max, my ladder. Take its derivative. We did that, right? We already did that. So now we have to set that and let that equal to zero. Okay. And my only concern here is the trick solving may become a little challenging. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is say, look, I've got 
all these different trig functions that do not uh, have anything in common the way they look. So why don't we change these all to sines and cosines and see if it looks any better. So cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. Okay, cotangent, right, this would be like times cotangent. So cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine. So the cosine will be in the numerator and the sine would be in the denominator, but sine times sine is just sine squared plus two. Now over here, once again, secant is the same thing as one over cosine theta and tangent is sine theta over cosine theta. Similar logic, cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And now, okay, at least now we have some trig functions that are in common, that are that are common, that they have they have some similarities. So let's let's start some solving. I'm gonna say I'm gonna take this term here and I'm gonna add it to the other side because it's already a negative 10. So if I add it, that'll give me 10 cosine theta over sine squared theta, which is equal to 2 sine theta over cosine squared theta. And now if I multiply both sides, I'm going to multiply this side by cosine squared, but whatever I do to one side, I got to do the other side. Those would divide. Result again, 10 cosine cubed theta over sine squared theta is equal to 2 sine theta. Similar logic, I'm going to multiply this side by sine squared theta, and of course, depending on your professor, they may be okay with you doing all the simplification in one step. So that's going to leave us with 10 cosine cubed theta equals 2 sine cubed theta. Now, this is looking promising to me. I'm going to, I'm going to divide by 2. So I end up with 5 cosine cubed theta equals sine cubed theta. And now I, I'm going to move all my trig to one side. We're, we're going to solve for theta essentially. So if I do sine cubed theta over cosine cubed theta, hopefully we recognize that that is tangent, right? Sine over cosine is tangent. So therefore, that's just tangent cubed. So getting rid of solving for theta, uh, we're going to take the cubed root of both sides. So I have the cubed root of 5 is equal to tangent of theta. And finally, to get my to get my uh, theta by itself, I would do arctangent of both sides. So we're going to say arctangent of the cubed root of 5 is equal to arctangent of tangent of theta. And hopefully we remember the arctangent and tangent are inverse functions, so they simplify, leaving me with just the argument. of theta. All right, great, we're done. No, we're not. This is the most common mistake that happens. Answer the question that's being asked. We found the theta that would minimize or that would minimize the length of the ladder, but they didn't ask us to find that. They asked us to find the actual length of the ladder. So we're going to hang on to this. We're going to hang on to this tan arc tangent of cubed root of 5 as our value that will minimize the length of the ladder. But now we need to go back to the length of our ladder, which we have right here. And we're going to say, okay, so what would the actual length be? Well, that would be 10 times cosecant theta. Whoops, but we already know. What is our theta? I don't know if I remember. The cubed root, nope, the arctangent of the cubed root of 5. And then plus 2 times the secant of that theta, which was the arctangent of the cubed root of 5. Okay, now the nice thing, the the problem does say to that we can um, just use our calculator, right? It says that the, the um, just round your answer to three decimal places. So if you want, we're going to just type this in our calculator, but I'm going to do a tiny bit of cleanup. I'm going to say, look, this 10 is in the numerator. Cosecant is the, one that's, it's the same thing as 1 over sine. So what we're really saying is this. 10 divided by sine of arctangent of cubed root of theta. And then this is going to be the same thing, 2 over secant is the same thing as cosine. 
so it's 1 over cosine. So therefore, it's going to be arctangent of the cubed root of 5. There we go. So that's what we're going to be typing into our calculator. I'm going to pause the video while I type all this in. Okay, I have it all typed in, and what you will notice, what you will notice is um, for going ahead and typing this in, we had 10 divided by, so you'll notice I have 10 divided by, and then because it's all um, the argument of sine, when I put sine and I put my parentheses for arctangent, and then I put another parentheses, and I just use the power of one third uh, instead of the cubed root symbol. Um, so it's five one third. Notice I just closed my two parentheses, and then I was able to just continue on plus two divided by cosine, and that will that should do it. And when we hit enter, we get a value of that just disappeared 15. Point and it said round to the nearest hundredth. Nope, three decimal places, three decimal places. So this is gonna be 15.546. So therefore, L is equal to 15.546. And don't forget your units, feet. So there we are. So now we have answered the question that's being asked, the value, the shortest length that the ladder could be um, when the height of the fence is 10 feet and the distance between the fence and the wall is two feet. Hope this makes sense.